So we're looking at using natural breaks as an option for our Choropleth map. Now, of course, when we've got the data in front of us, we don't know if it's going to be using natural breaks or even breaks. And so the best way to do that is to create a very rough histogram, I suppose, uh, where you're looking at the data range of the data that's been provided to you. So we're going down from fairly low numbers in the 40s all the way up to uh, almost 1900. So very quickly, because you'd be doing this under exam conditions, you would create a very rough um, x-axis. And the idea now is to plot that data onto that x-axis and look at where the clusters of our dots begin, uh, are created, and see if there's any gaps in between that data. So for example, if we're going to start at the first one, which is around 80. So we can see each of these is 100. So this is going to be a little bit below our 100 point. My next one at 56 is going to be about halfway. My 76 is going to be about three quarters of the way. Um, and then 47, a little bit below where we just had our last dot before that, and 52. So you can see we're already getting a bit of a cluster around here. So I'd put my dot a little bit higher so I can identify that they're different. And then we go up to 120 and 104 and 56 and 424. And then all 458, and then all the way up to 1890. So 191890 around here, uh, and then 1502, uh, 356, 1, 2, 356, uh, 139, uh, where am I up to? 59. So again, we're getting a lot of cluster down here. 38, about a third of the way, uh, 543, 157, uh, 367, 1, 2, 3, 167, um, 138, and then 140. So if we look at that, we can see that there is actually very much a cluster down one end, a gap for another cluster in the middle here, a large gap before we have one that sits on its own, another large gap with another data point at the end. So this is where you need to make some decisions. So we can see a very obvious data gap here. We can also see another very obvious data gap here and another one here. So when we look at that data, can we see that there's also a little bit of a gap here? And so you need to decide whether or not that is a substantive enough gap to create a separate category. So at the moment, if we look at these larger gaps, we're ending up with four categories. So we've got one that goes up to about um, 150, 200, probably about 200. We've then got another range which takes us up to about 600. And then we've got another one which takes us up to about 1600. And then the other one which is above 1600. So we've got four categories that we can use. The decision now is, do you want to split this one into a separate category? Now there could be an argument for that. There is a bit of a gap between um, the ones leading up to 100 and 102, I think it is, 104 plus. So the highest one, sub 100, is about 79. So you could almost argue that you could have a fifth category there. So we might have very low, low, moderate, high, very high. So we've got one, two, three, four, five categories. Or you could argue that we could have um, four categories if you decided that there's not a substantive enough gap there.